My name is Adam Levine. I'm Jesse Carmichael. We are from the band Maroon 5. And this is Frankie, our tambourine player. I was a PA. I was a terrible PA on the set of a television show. I was a writer's PA. I, was, I, I pretty much had the most meaningless job you could have because writers really don't need anything other than coffee. And I couldn't even do that well. I was so sad. I delivered pizzas and Italian food for this restaurant in my neighborhood in Culver City. And I'd like to, I'd like to, to juniors. Out, and I'd like to out Jamie Lee Curtis right now. And I just gotta say, Jamie Lee Curtis never tipped Jesse. Well, that was at Chin Chin. At Chin Chin. Yeah. She came in every day. Pretty much. <laughs> every <laughs> day. <laughs> Maybe she didn't see the tip jar. Oh no, she did. I would hold that it you up. held in front of her <laughs> face. But I see her every day. Rob Schneider. <laughs> Rob Schneider was always Rob a Schneider. big tipper. Big tipper. Rob Love Schneider. You. God bless you. Cars Flowers was an experiment. It was, Cars Flowers was a garage band that just got a record deal. The whole history of our band is so much like a fairy tale. The, the way we got a record contract when we were 16 years old was we were playing a beach party the night that we'd recorded our first demo tape and a producer was walking his dog along the beach and came up and liked our sound and was like, do you guys have a demo tape? And we gave it to him and the next day we got a contract with an indie label and then with that album we made, met up with Rob Cavallo and Reprise Records and started to do a, a big album while we were still in high school and then that came out and failed, which was great for us, I think. Phil Yerzy, Matt, is a huge part of why we are here today. You know? I think it's how you respond to failure that makes you successful. We started kind of re-embracing Michael Jackson and Prince and all this stuff and falling in love with Stevie Wonder and thought to myself, you know, this is my ticket. This is what this this really meshes with what I can do vocally, and that changed everything about how I approached songwriting, about how I approached music, about how my my acceptance for other things grew. And we all felt that way too. We all kind of grew up a little bit and thought, "Whoa, there's great hip hop right now. There's great innovations happening in, in, in all these great hip hop records." And the Neptunes and Timbaland were doing these really fresh, unique things that no one was doing. And so we thought, "Wow, this is better. We got to go here too." And we were unafraid to do it. it. wasn't cool at all. Remember, we got a lot of flag for it. Fortunately for us, I think that our reviews have actually gotten better, believe it or not. If you have an open mind, who knows? It's maybe possible to actually like Arcade Fire and Maroon 5, you know. It's not impossible. I like both those bands. I like the... I, so do I. Misery was a chord progression that Jesse and I were messing around with six years ago. Seven, six, seven years ago but we wanted to reintroduce ourselves. I think that this, the sound that we presented with Misery was the sound that was missing from the last record, in our opinion. And what was, how would you describe that? A f fun? The second record really wasn't very fun. There was something missing on that second record. There was a coldness to it that, it was a great, I think it was a fine record, but we wanted to get back to that, that happiness for a minute. <laughs>